Imagine two iconic fighters, one born in France, the other reborn in Israel. One laid the foundation, the other broke every limit. Today, we uncover how the Mirage III became the blueprint for the KFIR, transforming from a legendary Delta wing jet into a combat proven Israeli powerhouse. This is the evolution the world never saw coming. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel today. We're diving into one of the most fascinating transformations in aviation history, the evolution from the French Mirage III to the Israeli KFIR. These are not just fighter jets, they represent innovation under pressure, engineering resilience, and the fearless pursuit of air superiority. The Mirage III gave Israel a platform that changed every rule of aerial combat, particularly during intense conflicts of the 1960s and 70s. But when politics cut the supply line and engines became unavailable, Israel did something extraordinary. They built their own evolution. This wasn't just a modification. It was a complete reinvention. Stronger engine, new avionics, advanced materials, and a leap in performance so big that even major air forces around the world took notice. Today, we're going to break this down. How did Israel take the Mirage III and transform it into the KFIR, one of the most underrated fighters ever built? What changed? What improved? And how did this evolution shake the region's balance of air power? Stay tuned, because the details might surprise you. The Mirage III wasn't just another fighter, it was a revolution in Delta wing engineering developed by Dassault Aviation. It became one of the first successful supersonic interceptors of its era. With its iconic triangular wings and light aerodynamic structure, the Mirage Athur achieved impressive climb rates, long range interception abilities, and unmatched agility at high speeds. For many countries, it symbolized modern air power. Israel facing constant regional threats saw in the Mirage Athur the perfect aircraft to counter enemy bombers and fighters. It arrived just in time. When Israel acquired it, the jet quickly became the backbone of the Israeli Air Force. It served in numerous critical missions, including one of the most famous operations in history, the Six Day War. In that war, the Mirage III gained legendary status after dominating enemy aircraft in dogfights. Its combination of maneuverability and reliability made it a fearsome opponent. But while the Mirage III was exceptional, Israel knew it needed more. They needed greater thrust, improved avionics, and, and the ability to strike faster and harder. And that's where the seeds of its evolution began, right at the height of its success. The transformation from Mirage III to KFIR didn't start on an engineering table, it started with politics. After Israel's conflict with neighboring countries, France imposed an arms embargo. This meant no new Mirage aircraft, no spare parts, and most importantly, no engines. Suddenly, Israel's air power backbone was at risk. Their entire fleet depended on French components. But instead of giving in, Israel made one of its boldest decisions, build their own replacement entirely in-house. Israel Aircraft Industries, IAI, took on the mission. The Mirage's design was excellent, but its engine was the limiting factor. They needed more thrust, more durability, and a faster response to combat demands. So engineers began searching for alternatives and eventually discovered a powerful solution. The American made General Electric J79 engine, the same one used in the F4 Phantom. This was a game-changing discovery. Not only was the J79 massively more powerful, but it brought Western performance standards into an already agile platform. The embargo intended to weaken Israel instead pushed them toward creating something far superior to what they originally purchased, and thus the KFIR project was born. Once the engine was selected, the real engineering challenge began. The Mirage III was never designed to house an American J-79 engine, so Israel had to redesign, rebuild, and reshape the aircraft. This wasn't just a retrofit, it was a full reconstruction. Engineers reinforced the airframe to handle the engine's power. 
They redesigned air intakes, repositioned internal components, and upgraded the fuselage to support better heat resistance. The result was an aircraft that looked like a Mirage, but performed on an entirely different level. They named it the KFIR, meaning Lion Cub, and true to its name, it roared onto the aviation stage with unmatched ferocity. The KFIR delivered faster acceleration, a higher top speed, and superior climb rates compared to its French predecessor. It also featured modern avionics updated Israeli weapon systems and enhanced maneuverability. It was no longer a Mirage, it was the Mirage reimagined, and it was fully Israeli made. This marked a turning point not only in Israel's defense industry, but in global military aviation as well. When comparing raw performance, the KFIR outclassed the Mirage Athur in almost every category. The Mirage Athur, equipped with the Atar engine, had respectable power, but the KFIR's J79 engine delivered a major boost, over 17,000 pounds of thrust with afterburner. This meant faster acceleration in dogfights and a much stronger climb rate. The KFIR also had upgraded aerodynamic surfaces, including canards mounted near the front of the aircraft. These canards dramatically improved lift agility and low speed maneuverability. In addition, Israeli engineers integrated advanced avionic suits, radar improvements, weapon control systems, and compatibility with a wider range of missiles. Meanwhile, the Mirage III remained a reliable interceptor with good agility, but its aging systems and older engine meant it couldn't match the sheer performance evolution of the KFIR. In real combat environments, these improvements meant the KFIR could strike faster, dogfight more aggressively, and perform missions that the Mirage simply wasn't optimized for. It represented Israel's leap from user to innovator. The Mirage al was originally built as a high-speed interceptor, ideal for engaging enemy aircraft at medium to high altitudes, and it performed that role exceptionally during Israel's early wars. But combat changed. Threats diversified, Israel needed multi-role flexibility. That's where the KFIR excelled. The new aircraft wasn't just a fighter, it was a strike platform. It could carry more weapons than the Mirage E3, deliver precision guided munitions, and conduct deep strike missions with greater survivability. The extra engine thrust allowed the KFIR to take off with heavier payloads, giving Israel's Air Force more mission options from close air support to interdiction and even maritime strike. Its enhanced stability made ground attack missions far safer. The Mirage III had limited multi-aid roll capability, but the KFIR was built for versatility. It became a true workhorse capable of adapting to modern battlefields in ways that the Mirage III never could. The mission flexibility alone marked a major evolution in Israel's air doctrine, while the Mirage Athur was exported widely and became a global icon, the KFIR also made its mark internationally. Countries like Colombia, Ecuador, and Sri Lanka adopted the KFIR and used it extensively in combat roles. Many of these nations praised the KFIR's durability, cost, efficiency, and surprising performance edge over older fighters. In Colombia, the KFIR became the backbone of the Air Force for years, performing both air to air and ground strike missions with precision. The Miraja III, on the other hand, continued to serve worldwide, but by the time the KFIR was introduced, the Mirage was already aging. Israel's modifications showcased how a country under embargo could innovate its way into becoming an exporter of cutting edge aviation. The KFIR even ended up being leased to the US Navy and Marine Corps as an aggressor aircraft due to its speed and agility, proof of its impressive capabilities. This international footprint cemented the KFIR as more than just an Israeli upgrade, it became a globally respected fighter. Transforming the Mirage Athur into the KFIR was far from easy. The J-79 engine ran hotter than the original Atar, requiring Israeli engineers to develop advanced cooling systems and modify air intakes. They also reinforced the fuselage to handle the increased vibrations and thrust. 
New materials were used to strengthen high stress areas. Tracking and weapon systems had to be completely redesigned to integrate Israeli-made technology. One of the toughest challenges was balancing the aircraft. The heavier engine changed the jet's center of gravity, so aerodynamic redesigns were essential. This led to the introduction of canards, which significantly improved stability and maneuverability. These engineering breakthroughs didn't just create a better jet, they established Israel as a world-class aerospace innovator. The challenges forced them to develop technologies that would later influence even more advanced platforms. The KFIR wasn't the end of the story, it was the beginning of Israel's fighter development legacy. The lessons learned from strengthening airframes, integrating advanced avionics, and redesigning propulsion systems paved the way for future Israeli aircraft. Technologies from the KFIR directly influenced the development of the Lavi fighter, a highly advanced platform that ultimately shaped future drone systems and avionics suits used around the world. Even today, Israeli aerospace companies use concepts pioneered during the KFIR program, modular design, sensor fusion, aerodynamic innovation, and engine compatibility strategies. In many ways, the KFIR's creation proved that Israel could not just maintain modern fighters, but design them from scratch. The Mirage Athero was the teacher, the KFIR became the evolution, and Israel's modern air power was built on the foundation of both. So in the end, what separates the Mirage theory from the KFIR? The Mirage theory brought Israel into the jet age with deadly effectiveness. It proved its worth in combat and became a legend of aerial warfare. But the KFIR represented something deeper independence, innovation, reinvention. It took everything the Mirage theory did well, speed, agility, aerodynamic excellence, and pushed it beyond the limits of its original design. The Mirage Athur was the aircraft Israel needed. The KFIR was the aircraft Israel created. One is a symbol of France's aviation brilliance. The other is a symbol of Israel's determination to control its own destiny in the skies. And together they tell a story of evolution, engineering, and the unstoppable pursuit of air superiority. If you enjoyed this deep dive into aviation evolution, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss another powerful breakdown. Drop a comment below telling us which aircraft you want next.